Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So, I've started filming this video earlier in the evening, we're still in daylight here in the UK, because I'm not sure how long this is going to take, because the things that I'm going to be talking about are concepts of music, but things that you... I think can't really explain, but I'm going to do my best to try and explain them so that you understand what I'm talking about. First things first, the reason for making this video tonight is that a few days ago I had a comment on my channel from someone who said, love the channel, really like the videos, but can you get more into the theory behind the music? And he said that's what a lot of other channels are doing. And I intentionally don't get into theory at any kind of depth, I do occasionally mention, you know, pentatonic shape one, the majors, the minors, the chords, because I know that a lot of people need that as a go-to in order to just figure out where they are on the fretboard. But I'm going to explain in this video as to why I don't get into theory a lot and how I think as a guitar teacher for over 15 years, it can hold people back and stop them from just fulfilling their potential as a guitarist, but being able to express themselves on their guitar because they're always effectively copying what somebody else is doing or playing in a particular scale or mode for the key or the progression of chords that they're playing over the top of. There are going to be timestamps in the description below, so you can click on those if you want to jump around this video. But for reference, the comment was made under the analysis that we did of Prince performing Bambi. And it's interesting that Prince was one of those guitarists who approach playing in the way that I'm going to show you, just relying on talent and imagination, extemporization, all these things that he did. He never learned his solo note by note and then went up on stage and recited the solo. He was always just pushing his playing to the edge and relying on his own expression and ultimately talent for communicating what he wanted to through his guitar. So let's take it all the way down to the foundation of sound and music. I mean, what is music? It's an interesting question because we know that it is a sound, but how do we know how to do it? How do we know where notes are naturally? And to give an example of this, in the UK here in football matches or soccer, as it's called over in the USA, you might have a crowd that start up a chant. And for example, watching England, everyone or maybe three or four people will start shouting, come on England, like that. And they'll be shouting it. Obviously, I'm not going to shout it here, but thinking about that come on england there's a melody to that how do how do people know naturally where those notes are how do they know that they are singing notes from the major scale they don't they just did it and even more interestingly once these three or four people start singing it 10 more people get involved, then 100 people, then 1,000 people, and you end up having like 60,000 people all chanting, come on England, and they're all following the same melody, and they're not all coming in in different keys. They're all locked into the same key. How is this happening? What's going on? And it's not as if the people that started the chant quickly ran out of the stadium to get the sheet music to read, oh, what are the notes, because I can't remember, Oh, oh, right, that's it. And then they ran in. Oh, now we remember what the notes are. In fact, let's take the sheet music in so that we get it right. And then we'll quickly show it to everyone else so that we can all sing the same thing. So it's something that's so natural to us that we don't even really <laughs> appreciate what we're doing. We're all singing in the same key. We're all singing the same melody. We're all singing with, you know, relative pitch to each other. We're all locked in. We sing Sweet Caroline. Uh, Neil Diamond, of course, and in the chorus it goes, you know, everyone's joining in, singing in key, going, Sweet Caroline, da na na, good times never felt so good, so good, so good, so good, and the crowd extemporize that line, so good, so good, so good. How has that happened? How are people now extemporizing, not knowing the key of the song, not knowing the scale, and putting in something that didn't exist. And 
they're not saying to each other, okay guys, before we go through it the next time, what we're gonna do this time on the chorus is, on two and four of the bar, we're going to sing so good, so good, but only three times, because then the chorus comes in again. So we've got to just put it in that section on two and four and two of the next bar, and then we'll get into the chorus again. There hasn't been that discussion. We all get to hear it and copy and join in naturally. And not a word has been said about the theory, the timing, the notes, but everyone's doing it. So let's bring it back to playing an instrument. In this case, the guitar, but it's gonna be the same for every instrument you can think of. I'm gonna play a chord, and we're not even gonna think of the chord, even though you know guitar players will see the shape that I'm playing, but we're going to listen to the chord. And now, I'm gonna make a noise, and I've made a noise there that's relevant to the sound that I've just heard, but I'm not even thinking about a scale or the chord that it is. I'm just doing something in relation to that. And not only can I go na, but I can go na 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 na. I can start picking out notes that are relevant to what I've just played and are gonna be in lots of different scales and lots of different modes, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm just going na 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 You know, I can pick out notes. And this is where, now playing your instruments, um, or playing guitar, going na 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 na. I know where those notes are because I've been playing guitar a long time, but I learned to play with no knowledge of any theory, and I started listening to Jimi Hendrix. So I was trying to copy what he was doing, and inadvertently, I would find what I would then, you know, know to be shapes or pentatonic, minor shape one, and different scales, but I didn't know them as that. I just knew where the notes are, and I remembered them because I was just playing the melody that I could hear, but then when I wanted to play a melody, I just went to where the notes were that, of the melody that I was thinking of. That was the process. It was creating a melody yourself and playing it, not figuring out what the key is, what the scale is, and it doesn't matter what the chord is, you can move it anywhere. And now I'm still naturally picking out a note from that chord without any knowledge. And this is the thing that once you can pick out notes, why can't you then sing effectively all of the notes that you want to through your guitar? When I first started playing, I didn't have the ability to sing. That's something that I learned later on in life. So then I could vocalize the notes that I was thinking of in my head, but the notes that I was thinking of in my head, I could play them through the guitar. So it, say for example, if I went, na 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 like that i know where that is on my guitar na 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 so you're thinking of everything and your hand is playing the notes that you're thinking of and singing and yeah now i can kind of play it this and sing at the same time it means that i can still play if i went na 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 da 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 you know so relating this to scales and modes if I wanted to come up with a line that was a little bit more exotic and again, just coming up with it off the top of your head, you might have na 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 So you can kind of get a little bit, you know, Egyptian sounding and this is, you know, I'm not going to be referring to any modes and scales because I'm explaining that you can sing this. You don't need to know the scale. So, and I'm singing that an octave above because I know that my voice doesn't go as low as my low E string. So if I went and na 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 so it means that I haven't had to learn any scales, I'm just singing. And it just so happens that those notes will be coming from different modes and different scales. But I haven't had to learn anything. I'm just thinking, oh, I want this to sound a little bit more exotic, so I'm going to sing it, and the singing comes through the guitar. So we're gonna do a little exercise now, and you guys can try this at home. 
If you can't do this, it means that you're probably relying too much on knowing the key of a song and then what scales and modes you're allowed or should be playing over the top of a particular chord. And effectively, you're being told, you know, what's allowed and what's not allowed and where to put your fingers. Whereas I don't see lead guitar as that, that, you know, people tell me what I should be playing. It's all about expressing yourself and coming up with your own lines and playing the way that you play with your voice going through the guitar, because that will make it sound unique, because then that's your voice going through the guitar. That's the whole point. So anyway, I'm going to, it doesn't matter what this chord is, but I'm going to give you a chord and I'm going to turn down the volume on my guitar. You can try this and I'm going to pretend to play this note. I'm not even going to fret it, but I'm going to go na 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 and I'm going to sing out the notes that will be played when I play it. And if you can't do that, if you can't play the notes in your head without singing it na 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 like this note here i know that's what it's going to sound like because i'm just singing the notes that i'm playing and you know vice versa but i haven't gone right okay oh what was that line i was trying to play it was 12 10 and then i went down to 7 then i went up to 8 you're not doing that you're just playing and it's such a natural process even to the point where you go Na 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 da 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 dum da 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 dum playing that whole thing da da ba ba da 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 and this is the point that it becomes so natural that you can just start coming up with hooks and lines in your head that you're singing and you're playing them instantaneously on the guitar and there's nothing to I'm not, not talking about you know minor pentatonic scale here natural minor scale that I was playing uh, and and jumping between say for example before when I went into the major scale and we went na na like that I'm not you know referring to that these are just notes that I'm coming up with so we'll get to the point where you're thinking of lines and you're playing them so for example, going na 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 na, going. You're you're thinking of it as you're playing it, and hopefully you guys are starting to understand that when you approach it like this. Say that I went na 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 na, and I wanted to throw in that. I already know where it is. So from a mental point of view, understanding the concept. It's not being told, right, this is my minor pentatonic scale and those are the notes you're allowed to play. Those notes will be there if you're just ex extemporizing yourself, singing in key over a particular chord. It'll naturally happen. You don't need to learn the scale. You just need to have the technical ability to play the notes that you're singing, that you're thinking of. And that's another side of it that you need to work on, you know, playing with each of your fingers so that whatever you think of, you'll be able to do on the fretboard. But this is where speed, you know, comes in to the discussion because playing fast is subconscious. It means that you're not thinking. So everything that I've done so far has been conscious. I'm coming up with that. So it means that because I know that these notes that I've just played, for example, because I know those notes are there, I've sat down and worked through those and, and learned to play them fast just to give the solos a little bit of light and shade and just to change up the speed of your solos. But you don't have to play fast all the time. And this is why with playing fast, if it was about, you know, the fastest notes that you can put together, then, yeah, the fastest player would win at playing guitar and there'd be a competition every year. <laughs> there are speed playing competitions, but it doesn't connect with a lot of people because it's subconscious. As soon as you start communicating through your guitar with your voice, that's the kind of guitar that generally connects to most people. The slower guitar players with melody who are actually singing through their guitar 
have the biggest hits and are the most popular guitarists. So it's just something to take in that yes, those guitarists will play fast as well, but they will play with their voice most of the time and only use speed as a sprinkling, just a tool to help to mix up the solo a little bit and yeah, give you that extra little sight to see on the journey. And it might make you see lots of performances that you've seen in a different light to know that when somebody's playing a rehearsed piece, so say for example, somebody is playing, you know, there's loads of acoustic guitarists on YouTube at the moment who are, you know, using the guitar percussively, striking the guitar and they're playing, playing fingerstyle, and all of these movements are a very long set of subconscious muscle memory that they are going through, that they've been practicing for a very long time. It's not that they are changing it up every time they play. It's a very definite three or four minute piece that they are then reciting. So you've got that approach to playing that you're not putting in and more often than not, it'll be a cover of a well-known song. So they're not deciding on the notes anyway. They might change a note here or there, but that note will be changed all the time because it's part of their recital of the piece that they have learnt and the way that they have written it. So. It's a way to see different styles of playing guitar. For example, jazz is absolutely dependent on knowing where and when the next chord is going to change and what that chord is going to be because the lead needs to change on that beat of the bar into that new scale. So you can't play this kind of way with particular styles of music because yes, yeah, sometimes it doesn't allow you to because the chord changes happen so quickly. And again, it just depends what you're into, how you like to play. And when you're watching top jazz players, of course, yeah, it is very rehearsed. They know when the changes are coming, so they know which scale they're about to jump into. But once they're into that scale, they can start playing like this. As long as the notes aren't followed on from each other too quickly, they can start playing consciously like this within that particular chord. And that's what the great players can do. But as soon as they start throwing together lines that are very quick, they are throwing together those five or 10 or 15 notes as a subconscious dump, effectively, just playing through them. And then they'll get into a bit more conscious playing. So it's just understanding this relationship between, yeah, yeah pre-rehearsing something, playing it through, knowing the chord changes that are coming up, playing the notes. But then when you are to play yourself, not being restricted by all of that. Yeah, you can go away, you can learn a particular piece if you want to, but if you're starting to express yourself and learning to play lead guitar without any shackles, you want to use your own voice and forget about the theory because as soon as you start applying theory to what you're doing, you're thinking, what am I allowed or what are the notes that should be in here? That doesn't exist. The notes that should be in there are the ones that you're singing. But when you watch a solo, such as Prince's in that video, and then you break it down, he didn't play those notes thinking, oh, what scale am I going into? He just played it with, he would have had the knowledge of the scales, of course. But once you get good at singing through your guitar, it means that you're never gonna go wrong. Nobody's ever sung along with a chord and gone, Na, 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 na. and get all of those notes wrong here na, 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 na. all of those notes they fit <laughs> because I'm trying to make them fit and that's the point that you're just putting it over the top and I'm making them fit with the notes that are just you know going through me going through my mind at that particular time I haven't been told to play those particular notes and because of my own taste and the notes that I like the sound of, then they'll probably sound bluesy and a little bit, you know, rocky sometimes with some of the lines that I play, but it's because that's what I'm thinking of. That's what you can tell from my hair. That's what I like the sound of. So that's obviously how my voice is gonna sound when I sing through the guitar. If you're into, into different genres of music, you're gonna come up with different lines and that's the beauty of playing uh, without restrictions. If you wanted to play your own version of Prince and the way that he played, don't do it like that. Don't look at instructional videos and figure out, okay, what, right, so what note do I go to now after playing this one? 
that's you are playing in reverse you're playing your guitar back to front it should be you are coming up with it and then people are working out what you did not you're trying to work out what other people did because then that's not your voice and there's every chance that you can then start to sound like another guitarist or you are constantly following the same rules all the time on your fretboard whereas i think it's a great idea just to do what i did with that exercise to see if you know the notes on your fretboard without playing them and then once you do start to know the notes you'll start to know the difference between a tone a semitone and the amount of frets between so say for example i played that i know that going na 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 i know already before i even play it that's three frets higher na 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 i know that that's two frets below where i've played na na if i wanted to go na 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 i know that na 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 i already know where the note is before i've got there because i understand my fretboard i know the spacings not because i've learned a scale or anything but just because you know it's natural from playing the guitar so long it just starts to bind with your mind <laughs> it starts to give you the ability to sing through the guitar so that any note that you want to play say that i did play that na 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 and i want to go na 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 I know that all I've got to do is just go up that extra fret and go na na na. If I wanted to get jazzy when na na and did a little slide, obviously I can't vocalize it, but in my head I'm going na na. Then it happens there. I know that it's one fret below and I slide up. So again, it is trying to unlock your potential for imagining lines, coming up with things yourself, and fully understanding your guitar without saying right okay what key are we in e minor okay e minor pentatonic shape one that's up here and doing it all like that it's much better to yeah you know, it's not a lost cause if you know p minor pentatonic shape one and you know these notes play around with that shape and try and find na 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 where that is in your shape and try and log that in there because eventually your brain will just log in all of these notes so that you don't need to know this scale anymore. Not only can you go na 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 na, you can go na na. You'll know that that na note is there. There's nothing wrong with being influenced by other guitarists. And like when I was talking to Steve Stevens on the channel recently, you can build up your address book of little lines that you like to play to give you time to think sometimes you will need that live if something happens and it throws you off you need some kind of backup just to play through some subconscious muscle memory but then once you're back on track you can get back into your conscious playing and sing through your guitar so i guess the question is when you're playing lead guitar are you actually singing the notes that you're playing or are you just going through subconscious muscle memory playing notes from the scales that you know work over the chord that you're playing and you know if you're not singing the notes then maybe you want to experiment with this just play around with your guitar and see if you know what the note's going to sound like before you play it because once you get to that point then you can start coming up with your own lines which is so much more rewarding in my experience to throw something together that's totally original and something that people can hear your influences in your playing but you're not just copying them you're not just an imitation of that previous guitarist you're using those influences to just play the way you want to and to express yourself and have your own voice through the instrument so a totally different video for tonight but i felt like this was something that maybe I've overlooked and just assumed that everyone is playing the right way around that when they want to play a lead they're singing it and just coming up with their own lines and then you can play endlessly because you're constantly singing whereas I realize maybe everyone is relying on a key and, and a scale and they need to know where to go whereas the great thing about music is you don't need to know where to go because it's already in your head that's you as a musician that's your artistic license and that is your talent so referring back to prince 
He used his talent. He was singing through the guitar. He wasn't just playing pre-rehearsed lines that you know for three or four minutes. It was just him feeling it and going where his voice did. Sing the note, push down on the fretboard and play the note. And if it's not the right note, then <laughs> at least you know that it's something that you can work on and get better at. And I, I assure you that if you get better at doing that, once you can start to know what the notes are before you play them, it will just blow the lid off your lead guitar playing because the sky's the limit. Any notes you can think of, any runs, any expression that you want to throw in there, you'll be able to do instantaneously. So anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, if you've made it to the end, <laughs> please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!